So it has came to our attention that it has been a while since we've done a video on the 62 Impala. Sorry, Mark. But we are back with it. The owner decided he wanted to do front disc brake upgrade along with the booster upgrade from the single reservoir to the dual reservoir. Let's give it the master mechanic. He's over here admiring his work, trying to figure out what he wants to do. So on this episode of Chevy Impala, we're gonna be upgrading the brakes. We had a lot of comments about the reservoir, single reservoir, and that we need to upgrade it. I don't think that's why we're doing it, but we're gonna be doing that's it. That's not why we're doing it. <laughs> the owner decided he wanted to do disc brake conversion on this thing. We got four wheel drum. Uh, as you can see, a single master cylinder, single reservoir master cylinder, and it is a power brake. We're gonna convert it to a dual reservoir, which if you know anything about the Impalas, the 58 through 64s, it has a single line, which tees the front here, then it goes over to that side and tees the other front, and then it goes to the back. So I know on the 58 through 64 Chevys, the, the, this is all the same. The X-frame, all the brake lines, it's gonna come over and the rear is gonna be teed on that side. I think what I might do on this, this go around is I'm gonna come on this side of the frame and I'll come and I'll meet up with the brake line at the X and tee it back there underneath the car instead of trying to come around this way. That's what I'm leaning towards this time. But uh, one of the problems um, on the brakes is the smaller, he wanted to keep his original wheels, the 14 inch wheels, so you gotta run the smaller rotors. All the smaller rotors that work with the 14 inch wheels that I found, it's gonna move the tire out 5 eighths of an inch on each side, it widens the track a little bit because of the rotor. It uses the stock spindle, but because of the rotor, that's gonna move it out, the mounting of the wheel. So we might add a spacer plate on the back to, to balance it out, you know, so it doesn't look like a pre-runner with a wider front. But we'll see once we get done and we get back on the ground. I don't think you'll even notice it. It's such a small amount. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna start with taking this one apart. We're gonna get all this old stuff off. We got a new, new ba uh, master or a new master cylinder and a new booster. So all this is, is coming off. So let me get some tools here. We'll get started getting this off of here. So I'm gonna start with taking this vacuum line off. Now this year, I'm pretty sure this isn't, this isn't a factory booster. It's got this bracket here that kind of steps it up, little mechanism in it. So I'm gonna separate it. It's got a cotter pin here on the rod. I'm gonna knock this cotter pin out. It's been in there for a few days. It's a little rusted up. There it is. Got it, got it, see, see? Now we're gonna knock this pin out of here. It's got like powder coating or something all over this. Nothing wants to come apart. All right, so I'm gonna have to regroup. I'm gonna go underneath the dash. I'm gonna take the whole entire bracket off. This, this pin that's in here is just rust, rusted in. It won't, it won't come out. And there's not enough room to get in here to get it apart. So I'm not gonna try to use this bracket. I'm gonna take the whole, the whole deal. So I just gotta take it loose from the, the pedal so I won't be able to show you. So give me a second. Let me get underneath the dash and take that pin out. On this one, there's two nuts on the outside and two on the inside. And we already got the shaft off. So the last thing is the brake line. I saved till last, so I'm gonna get some rags here. And then there's not much gonna come out of the line. It's gonna come out of the booster because it's full of fluid. So I'm gonna try to catch it and just get it out of, out of here and put it in a pan so it doesn't sit and drip in the car. Try to move as fast as possible to keep the mess from getting on the car. There's nothing even coming out of it. Let's slide the whole assembly out of here. It's like that. The pin that wouldn't come out, see it's all rusted up in there. It wouldn't come out of the center. So that's why I wasn't able to get it apart. It slides on the other, outer one here, but it won't come out of the center. So I'm only gonna be showing uh, the one side here because you know it's the same on both, both deals. So now I'm gonna take the hubcap off here, take the wheel off. Man, it was really on there. It's like 50 pounds in itself. Serious cap. Oh, man. Look at this. I got double lug nut, or double lug nut, yeah, double lug nut socket. See? Let's keep going. Huh? Look at Bono hands. Look at that, huh? There's some braking power for you. Wow. That's technology and stuff. Drum brakes. Do you like drum brakes? I hate drum brakes. So we're gonna strip all this down. Um, I'm not sure if the new one came with a dust cap, but we're not gonna use any of this. The hub, the brakes, the backing plate, anything, the brake lines. I'm pretty sure it came with new brake lines too. So we're just gonna take it down. So we're gonna knock off this, this beat to death dust cap. We probably wouldn't use this one either way. So I'm gonna try to grab them here and just pop them out. I'm pretty sure you gotta use the washer again too. But we'll just keep it all right here to the side. We're gonna pop off our springs. Got our fancy little, little tool here. It hooks the spring. 
Just pop, pops it right off. Oh, that is fancy. Like that? Where'd you pick that up at? Man, back in 1960, I got that. And you got your little little capture thing here. Get your little retaining, retaining springs. Like so. And same on this side. And you gotta hold the little stud so you can push it and twist it. Look at that, huh? Whole enchilada. Whole enchilada. So these two bolts, these are the two that go to the steering. And then the upper one here is what holds the wheel cylinder. So we're gonna have to take this off and this off because we gotta get rid of this backing plate. So I'm pretty sure I can just take this off and then the brake line off and keep it all together. So I'm gonna knock this up or beat over here. Now I gotta grab a socket. This guy's normally really, really tight. If I can find my impact, we can just blap it, but we're gonna do it manually here. So see how tight it is. Oh, wasn't too bad. You see the whole wheel cylinder comes with the brake line. So we're just gonna take the brake line loose up here because this is, this is a different brake line. A male in to the brake line where it seals in the wheel cylinder and the other one's gonna be probably a banjo where it goes to the caliper. A pair of pliers, we'll take the retaining clip out. There it goes. You wanna be careful on the hard line on the car because you're reusing that. So if a normal wrench won't get it broke loose, you need to grab a line wrench, but we're gonna start with uh, just two normal wrenches here. Somebody painted this or something, did a little detailed job. So all these, all these socket wrench sizes are really tight with paint. Got it. And this is gonna leak, but we took the master cylinder off, so it's just gonna be whatever's in the line right here. It's gonna eventually stop. So we just wanna make sure it can leak out. You know, you wanna catch it so it doesn't make a mess, but you don't wanna get on your suspension because the brake fluid will eat up you know, all, your, all the paint and finish work off. If you wanted it to stop, you could use the old vacuum cap trick. We'll get this out of here. We'll wipe this off here to make sure it doesn't mess up our paint. So now that we got it all stripped down, let me show you what we're gonna be putting back on it. Parts that we got here. What, what is this? This is a lead brakes. Got a new cute little brake booster and a dual reservoir master cylinder. Portioning valve right off of it here. And it comes with hardware here for the brake rod. Little bleeder tubes. Bleed the master cylinder, bench bleed it. It's all in this box. And then we have in these boxes, we have our two new brake lines, flex lines. We have our rotors. We have our other rotor. Got our karate breaking wood. What do we got here? What do we got here? We have our brake caliper, fully fully loaded, single piston. We have our other caliper, same deal. Our mounting hardware our mounting brackets, then we have our hardware. Got our wheel bearings, our wheel seals, our new bolts. Oh, it does have new dust caps. The whole deal. So that's, so you see this is all the hardware. Comes with the check sheet. If you don't get any instructions, you gotta figure it out. Let's put it on, will you? Let's see. These are the parts that has to go on first in order to mount the caliper to the spindle after you put the rotor on. You want to put some Loctite on this giant armor's bolt. We take the big old bracket. The shim goes behind it. Get our bolt. Bolt goes in here. We have our lower bracket. It goes through to the steering shaft. So it's going to go all the way through. And then the support here has the other spacer. Now we're going to tighten it all down. We're going to torque the upper bolt, about like so. Oh, that's tight. Okay, then after that's torqued, we're going to get our other torque wrench, our socket. We're going to torque all three of these bolts. You got to watch your face. You don't want it to slip off and smack your face.
All right, so that's all that's to it for the bracket. Now, we're gonna grab our rotor. And you see it has this oily, messy stuff on here to keep it from rusting in shipment and uh, storage and everything. So I'm gonna clean this, clean this nonsense off of here. Then we get our little bearing packer here. This is the best thing since sliced bread. Take your little your bearing, set it in here, put your little packer on top, give it a little push, pack your bearing. Then you get your seal, you get your Ford tool, you tap it in, about like so. Then you take your whole assembly, you gotta watch your outer bearing here, Carefully slide it on the spindle. Then you get your washer. And this kit comes with a thinner nut than the factory one because this is spaced out. So if you use the factory nut, you can't get the, a cotter pin in here to hold it all together. So you have to use a little short guy. Get our pliers here. We're gonna run this down snug. And then we're gonna spin it to make sure everything's seated. And we're gonna snug it down to the point. There's two spots where you can put the cotter pin in. And it might not be um, enough room for both, the whole thickness of the cotter pin. So what I'm gonna do on this side is, is I'm gonna use half of this. I'm gonna break the law. So I'm gonna go like this. We're gonna put this in here. Okay, that's, now we're gonna get our new dust cap. We're gonna get our Mazda, Mazda, Mazda carb adjuster. Work this cap in here. By going on the outside, you don't beat the crap out of your cap so it rubs on your cotter pin and your nut and everything. Now we're gonna grab our caliper way over here. These are just a shipping cardboard to keep the pads in place. So these, um, this is the hardware that, that bolts it to the bracket. This is threaded here. The only reason why these are in here, they're so tight, is because there's an O-ring, there's a rubber in here, an O-ring, and it's it's new and it's dry, so it holds this thing in here. So you kind of got to work it out. Get that guy out of there. So you want to make sure that you get the caliper, that the bleeder is above the, the brake line. So this is going to be on this side, so the bleeder wants to be in the top. So make sure you get the right bleeder, or the right caliper with the bleeder on top. So we can put a little bit of lube on here. Nothing crazy, a little bit of lube on here. Slide this over the rotor. Let's get it down there as straight as possible. And you want to watch the pad that it's not um, below the pin here. There we go. It's going to be all tight because it's all new. We want to make sure that he turns. Nothing's rubbing. Everything looks good. Now we're going to get our rags out of here. Just catching all of our leaking fluid. And this brake line, you know, it's, it's the banjo for the caliper. And it can go, this one can go either way. No offset or anything to it. So I'm gonna get started up in here first. And this one, is, this kit, it's kind of funny because it comes with two sets of uh, ceiling rings. It comes with some on the caliper, on the new banjo bolts, and then it comes with some separately in the bag. So I just use the ones that came with the uh, caliper. So I'll take my brake line, I wanna set it up so it's you know a natural curve. So after tightening up the banjo bolt, double check and make sure your line is routed, that it's not gonna be in the way. Then we'll get our new retainer brake line clip here. Get our four tool, give it a little tappy tap. Okay, then we need to use two wrenches now. So we have a wrench here on the bottom. So we're gonna hold it even though it's splined and we're gonna tighten up the line now. So now that I'm done with the passenger side here, I'm gonna go over and do the same on the driver's side. We're gonna get it finished up. This is a, a nice little upgrade from the drum, just so if you ever drive in, in wet, wet roads and rain, if you ever get water in a drum before, you get some serious brake fade. So this is a lot safer, multiple benefits. So it's good that he upgraded uh, the brakes on top of the master cylinder that has a dual reservoir now. So now we're gonna go over to the driver's side, put that together. Man, if it's only that easy again, huh? Can you teach me how to do that? Yeah, that's, that's a trick right there. So we got the driver's side done here. And I don't know if you noticed that we replaced all the steering. This thing had, this was a factory power steering car. It had the RAM on the drag link. At the pitman arm, it had a lot of slop when the drag, where the drag link went to the pitman because of the, the stock original um, ram style power steering. So we converted it, 
because this this car somebody converted to a gearbox power steering so we did away with all the factory stuff on the, the steering ram so we put it back to a manual steering and we needed a new other arm and new pitman arm and then we did these upgraded adjusters that it doesn't have the the stock style that has the clamps these that have the jam nuts so it's a little nicer and it doesn't have the bulkiness sometimes you wind up being in a certain spot that they'll catch somewhere so these are just these are nice the jam nut style because you can you know once it's locked down there's is not bulky it's just not much bigger than the inner and outer tie rod so it's really nice so we got all that taken care of so now that we got the brakes and everything done once we get this back together uh, we need to take it and get it aligned get it all straightened out before we give it give it back but we're going to put the booster on it and we're going to take the master cylinder off of it and get it painted because it drives me nuts to have a master cylinder that winds up rusting because for some reason I guess you can't paint a master cylinder I don't understand why let's do it I'm gonna get it done let's go grab it so I'm gonna have to take the oh, I'm just gonna bolt it here from the booster so I'm just gonna take the two two nuts off here and I'm gonna have to take the lines off and the proportioning valve this little bracket off also and I'll put a little little cap in there and we'll leave the lid and the little brackets off we'll have it nice and detailed so I got the got the master cylinder here all stripped down ready to paint got everything off of it I got the ports here, just plugged up some vacuum caps. Got it upside down, I don't need to worry about painting where the cap goes on. You wanna keep that, keep that uh, bare, bare metal because it has a rubber seal on there. You don't wanna get any paint inside, so just leave it like that. We're just gonna paint it up. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Well, while we're waiting for the master cylinder to tack up a little bit to put another coat on it, I want to put this on here and see, see how it looks. See if it's going to be one time on or if I got to put a couple times on. So and this bracket has adjustment up and down, so I just want to get it on here and then we'll figure out where up and down it needs to be. This has a little bit of adjustment. Once we get it on, we'll get, I'll go inside and I'll make, get it lined up with the pedal. Get lined up with the hole here, straight straight shot and then we'll tighten it down. Now that the master cylinder is all dry, we got that put on here, got it mocked up. It's not bled yet, it's still empty deal. We got the lines here roughed in. We got to do a couple um, clamps to hold the line that goes to the rear. The proportioning valve separated the fronts, separated them side to side, not just front to rear. So the fronts are, are left and right separate and then the rear is, is by itself. Then I like to do a little squiggly, kind of looks like a little bit of craziness going on here, but they each have their own little loopy loop, little spiral, so the brake line has some, some give to it, some flex. And you can see on this block, the original line that comes over from the driver's side, and normally it would come off of this block here, and this would be the rear that would go back that I showed before. Well, I just capped it here, and it goes to the rear, and then I took the rear back and I crossed it over at the cross member to get it on that side for the rear. So we eliminated the line here, which kind of worked out because it's kind of close to this header tube. Now we just got to deal with the the fuel line. So now that I have all the brake lines and everything all roughed in, I don't want to. I don't want to bore you. Have you watch me finish it up bleeding it? So we're gonna go ahead. I'll get this bled. I'll get the rod put in it. So make sure you stay tuned. When we come back, we're gonna do the uh, finish up the AC, put the box in it. So make sure you go down. You like, share, subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about the good old Impala. Things coming together. Come on back for next time.